whatever it is with this video is basically going for question number 13. Because uh, I accidentally skipped this uh, during our last video explaining the second major exam. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, so in the question, it says that we have two charges. Uh, positive charge uh, has a, a value of 10 picocoulomb, and another negative charge that has a value of 5 picocoulomb. Okay, so and we're given a point P on the ground, and we're asked to find the electric field, the net electric field due to these two charges uh, at this point. Um, so we know that if you are to find the, uh, the electric field due to a point charge, you use this equation. E is equal to K times Q over R squared, uh, where K is the charge and R is the separation between the two, between the charge and between the point we're interested to find the electric field at. Okay, so first thing uh, you want to do with this problem is get your uh, measurements of lengths. So we know that the separation between uh, the positive charge and this here, the middle line, uh, is basically five centimeters, and it's the same thing over here. So if you use Pythagorean theorem, um, you'll, you'll figure out that the hypotenuse is basically square root of five over 10 times 100 centimeters. Okay, once you do that, you can figure out the angle, or uh, I called it here theta. So theta is basically the cosine inverse of the adjacent, which is 10 centimeters, over the hypotenuse. If you plug this into a calculator, you'll be figuring out that theta is basically uh, 63.4 degrees. And uh, as we can see that this line over here is uh, parallel to, to this line over here. So the, this angle and this angle must be identical. Also, by symmetry, the right triangle has the same exact angle because we have the same sides. Uh, so these two uh, triangles are identical. And identical triangles have the identical angle. Okay, so if this angle is theta, then th this line is parallel to this line. And uh, so this angle must be identical to this angle as well because of the parallel lines. So once we have figured our uh, lens and angles out, now it's just time to use our equation to kind of evaluate the electric field at this point. Okay, so let's start by the x-axis. Uh, okay, so this is E and this is E as well. So uh, in the x-axis, we have a net electric field. So we know that uh, this charge is positive, therefore the electric field will be going out of the charge. So the electric field is going in this direction. But then this charge over here is negative, so our electric field vector is going to be heading this direction. So if you sum the x components of these two vectors, you'll be having uh, a net component in this direction. And uh, so you have to add the component from this uh, electric field and the component from this electric field. So let's just uh, use our formula. So uh, E is equal to KQ over R squared. Uh, K is a constant, and uh, the charge over here is uh, 10 P to coulomb. And uh, in order to convert units from P to, to P to coulomb to coulomb, you multiply by 10 to the negative 12. OK, so our charge is basically 10 times 10 to the negative 12 coulomb over the distance between the charge and the point we're interested to find the electric field at. So that charge, we, uh, I mean the distance, uh, we already calculated it using uh, Pythagorean theorem. So it's equal to five uh, over, square root of five over 10 times 10 to the, times 100 centimeters. But you want it in meters, right? So we, we have to divide by 100. So uh, in meters, the distance is square root of five over 10. Square that and you get 5 over 100. So this here is the net electric field, uh, this over here, uh, between the parentheses, is the net electric field due to the positive charge. But we're only, in, in here at this point, we're only interested in the x component of the electric field to the, due to the positive charge. So we, we're going to have to multiply that by cosine the angle uh, here, which is uh, 63.4. Okay, if you multiply, you get 
how far the cosine angle, you'll be getting the x component of this electric field. So now, let, let's figure out the x component of the this electric field with the negative charge. So again, uh, direct application of our electric field uh, formula. We're going to have k times the charge, which is phi to equal coulomb, uh, converted to me, uh, coulombs, multiplied by uh, 10 to the negative 12, over the distance between the charge and the point squared, which is the same as uh, the other distance, uh, and that would be uh, 5 over 100. And then multiply that by cosine the angle, again, to get the x component. Then add these two together, yeah, you'll be getting uh, something like this, uh, 12 nanometers. Um, 12 Newton per coulomb. Okay, so uh, now we have already figured out the net electric field in the x axis. Now let's figure out the net electric field in the y axis. By the same exact logic, use the formula, but this time multiply the cosine, I mean the sine instead of the cosine. And, uh, and then add, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, in this case, we, we don't add, we subtract. Because uh, this electric field is uh, heading, or the y component, at least, of this electric field is upward. And the y component of this electric field is downward. And we know that this charge is higher or bigger than this charge. It's 10. So the upper hand for uh, the bigger electric field, uh, or the next electric field, is going to be heading upward because this charge is uh, bigger than this charge. So we subtract this small vector from this big vector. So this small vector is basically the electric field times cosine the angle. The electric field due to the, this charge. Okay, so just plug this number to the calculator and you'll be getting uh, eight uh, newton, newton per coulomb. And now we have evaluated the next electric field in the x, ex, and ey. So all we need to do is basically uh, use uh, Pythagorean theorem to evaluate uh, the net field from both the components. So that's going to be something, something like this. Square this, these two sides to get the length of the hypotenuse. So that's going to be something like this. Is equal to a net. So an a net is going to be uh, 1.48 net newton per coulomb. And that is your answer. Alright guys, so uh, there is a, a comma here that I forget to add. So uh, the answer uh, here is 1.2, it's not 12, and uh, here it's uh, 0 0.8. Um, yeah, so if you add these two uh, using the Pythagorean theorem, uh, you'll be getting uh, 1.4 net newton per coulomb, and that is the correct answer. And uh, I apologize for missing uh, this problem in the previous video, and I apologize for not adding these two commas.